Hi, this is Miles Marie, the Soldier of Mary. I've come across an interview. I don't know why it took me so long to find it, but Mary Cruz of Garibandao, the visionary, she gave an interview to El Mundo newspaper in Spain earlier in this year. It's on almost, there aren't any YouTube videos about this in English. There are virtually no website in English about this interview. It's not been translated into English by anybody, but there it is. It's not on any of the Garibandao websites. Uh, they haven't promoted this interview at all. It's gone unnoticed, but yet it makes some startling revelations. It's an explosive interview that says some things relevant to our situation in 2021. And it says things about the days of the apparitions that I never knew about her, about the other girls. So I'm just going to go through the interview now. I'm going to read it through. It's on El Mundo on the website of the newspaper and the interview was conducted by David Cuevas and Christian Push. Okay, so I'm going to read it. I'm going to add in interviewer, a Mary Cruz, so that you're going to be able to follow the interview, hopefully, clearly. Apologies if I make any mistakes. I've recorded this a few times now, and I think I'm getting the hang of it. Here we go. Plava de España, in the heart of Aviles in Asturias, Maricruz González completes her daily routine of walking after dinner through the old town. The majority of the Avilesenses that are crossing each day that same, same uh, plaza, they do not know that 60 years ago, this petite woman of 72 years caused a revolution in Spain, one that continues in the US, in that it is said that in the company of three other girls, they saw the very Virgin Mary while entering into a trance in a group of pine trees, 154 kilometers from where today she lives. She's passed 37 years without making any kind of declaration to a journalist. And she rejects photographs being taken of her. She says, she tells us, I prefer to pass unknown, unrecognized. Mary Cruz maintains her thin physique, her face, which is marked or refined, and a deep glance with large eyes. Although now she is not that same girl of the apparent miracle. Days before seeing the Virgin on the 18th of June in 1961, together with Conchita Gonzalez, Mariloli Mathon, and Jacinta Gonzalez, they saw an apparition of an angel in San Sebastian de Garabandao in Cantabria in full ecstasy through Marian apparitions. The Cantabrian girls used to walk backwards through the sharp roads, praying the rosary and doing so in unison. That all happened, that all lasted until 1965. Still, pilgrimages continue to the place. It happened 103 years after the apparitions in Lourdes and 44 years after Fatima. The Garabandal Center also survives to this day. It has moved millions. It was created by the blind Joey Lomangino and it's an association that has, that can count uh, in the last 70 years, 400 groups only in the USA and with places, with locations also in Europe, India, China, Japan, Malaysia, Russia, Australia, and South Africa. Mary Lurley died in Massachusetts. Conchita lives in New York, Jacinta in California. The three other girls emigrated to the land, to the country, that the apparitions at the visions received the most media attention. Mary Cruz was the only one who stayed in Spain, where she got married to Ignatius Caballero in 1970. And in her Aviles, a town of adoption, and before our recorder, Mary Cruz begins, commences her recollections. She says, I was 11 years old and they were 12. We were stealing apples and we were going with fear 
that they we might be caught and we might be punished because in those days everything was a sin above all if you were a girl because boys were able to get away with whatever they liked we saw an angel with a kind of kind of cape and a tunic he had long hair it was saint michael the archangel he had a very handsome face he didn't say anything that's at least that's how i imagine it interviewer what what do you refer to when you say that's that's how i imagine it is it then perhaps that you didn't see him in truth Merry Christmas. it isn't as much as that you don't know if you are imagining it or if it really happened so perhaps we uh, conjured it up in our minds interviewer and is it that how is it that you how was it that you met with the virgin a few days afterwards you entered into an ecstasy a chance Mary Chris the virgin the virgin I imagine with a white dress and a blue mantle a teenager an adolescent or maybe a little bit older the people were saying they were saying that it was the virgin of Our Lady of Mount Carmel but it wasn't she spoke a little she had a very calm calming voice soft voice interviewer and she gave you a message on the 18th of October 1961 that said we must be very good if we are not a chastisement will come upon us already the cup is filling up and if we don't change a chastisement a very great chastisement will come upon us Merry Christmas a thing that had not happened until now interviewer what are you referring to to covid Merry Christmas I believe so I think so worse than that is what is going what is happening I never imagined it I never imagined it it was a, it came as a, a, a blow and it stopped everything it is a disaster there's no greater chastisement punishment than that of not being able to see your children your grandchildren interview and you some years later you left the town Mary Cross I married at 19 years and I came to Avilez and there um, everything went wrong for me it was difficult what happened was really difficult because I didn't have anybody there and I didn't know anybody it was a very abrupt change that day, those days that time the days of the apparitions that was the most happy time of my life they were my most happy the most happy years I spent it at that those days and that, that thing that I remember most is how much the people loved us interviewer and you saw the Virgin on more occasions during those four years Merry Christmas we contacted various times with her there were more apparitions interviewer some people say that you were pressurized by ecclesiastical parties because of the apparitions Mary Chris, that's not the case they didn't manipulate us on the contrary they were very prudent they interviewed us in order to know what was going on what we'd seen nothing more the curate the priest of the parish back then was a man of the people and he, the the before he was able to say his sermon at mass it had to be seen approved previously by the archbishop he wasn't stupid but neither did he have the intelligence to manipulate our our uh, witness our testimony and the archbishop he didn't he didn't pressurize us either they interviewed us nothing more they sent a commission with a psychiatrist uh, the sec and a secretary of the bishop and a, a doctor they showed us some drawings in order to know uh, in order to know our in, in our uh, interpretation of them and next we went to speak with the bishop Audrey Azola interviewer speaking of the scientists some of them came and poked you um, prodded you during those ecstasies and you weren't reacting Mary Chris. that's true that's true 
when I wasn't in an ecstasy and they were, I remember how they were they were poking them. Interviewer, there are iconic pictures in which we see you apparently in ecstasy walking backwards through the stony, the rocky pathways, Magrus. We were accustomed, we were used to walking through those those roads that were, those paths that were very difficult. It wasn't a strange, such a strange thing, although the people, they called attention to it. Don't take any importance to it. That had nothing supernatural, but no supernatural explanation to it. Interviewer. Were there negative repercussions that came to you in your home environment, Maricross? My mother suffered much back then. And things, those things made her very nervous. She had to go to the doctor and everything because of stomach problems. And she was asking that he might uh, prescribe me something because they were saying that she was saying that I wasn't a girl that lied and maybe what was going on might have a medical uh, cause to it. Interviewer. You came to declare on one occasion that you hadn't seen the Virgin nor the Angel, and but everything had been urged on by Conchita. But in 2005, in a written manuscript, uh, the mother Mary of Nieves Garcia uh, said that you told her that you had said these things in order to please your mother, owing to the said problems of her stomach. Mary Chris, I don't remember, to be honest. But it could be that I said that many years ago because my mum was very sick. Interviewer, have you returned to Garaban now? Mary Griff, I tend to go each summer. Interviewer, and you speak with the, pil the pilgrims that go there, Mary Griff. I don't speak with anybody. When I go and they identify me, all of them want to ask me things, but it doesn't please me. I'm not interested in returning to tell everything that happened. Interviewer, do you have contact with the rest of the visionaries? Marycroft, barely. Jacinta goes often to Garabandal. About Conchita, I don't know anything. With her, I used to have, or Jacinta used to have, a very special relationship. I have not seen Conchita uh, since I got married 50 years ago. Interviewer. Um, would you like to return and see them, Mary Cruz? No, I prefer to stay with my memory of all that happened. Interviewer. And have you have you seen the Virgin again, Mary Cruz? No. When I have some problem, no matter how small it might be, I, I ask her things, but she doesn't grant me them. I say, Virgin, I need money, for example, but nothing happens. She laughs. I don't think it's a sin to ask such things of Our Lady. Interviewer. What do you think about Garabandal, Sol Dios Sol Sabe, the film that came out in 2018 that was about you? Mary Chris, I didn't see it. It was enough uh, to see the uh, promotional poster. That was sufficient. They put me in a shirt with a collar. My goodness. I used to, back then, wear, wear dresses with a round collar, with a few lapels that my mum had made, very pretty ones. They invited me to come and see it, those who were responsible for the film, but I declined. Interviewer, do you consider yourself to be someone special through the um, contact, the contact with Our Lady? Mary Chris, not at all. Each one of us has our own value, but I especially, I don't consider myself to be an idol or a, like a point of reference for anybody. Concluding remarks. After our chat, which lasted two hours walking around, we said farewell to someone who has always wanted and continues wanting to pass totally unnoticed, unrecognized. Mary Chris, now she doesn't seem like that same girl that had or entered into contact with entities presumably celestial 60 years ago neither did she want to be but pasa lo que pasa whether you know come what may 
But regarding the truth of Garabandal, perhaps, perhaps only, only they know it. I thought I was going to say only God knows it, but perhaps it seems that only they know it. Only the visionaries know it. Okay, so that's the conclusion of the interview. There's so much I could talk about in analysis, and maybe you're uh, gobsmacked, surprised by some of the things she said here. Maybe not surprised in that she had uh, made denials about the apparitions in the past, but there's details here that, that haven't been given beforehand. Um, which I really could go on about, like the the pathway, the fact that they they said she said that that wasn't supernatural, that was just like their village, and they knew the streets well, and they were kind of accustomed to running and walking backwards in the streets, and it wasn't such a big deal. Um, you know, uh, I won't comment any more on it right now. I think I'll do an, a video analysing this interview more fully. Uh, so until then, may Almighty God bless you, may Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.